Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new, I am so over the moon that you found me and if you've been here before, oh my god, you came back. <laughs> my name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Huntbot. Today we are going to take a look at the Unique Foundation, which is touted as being a service to help victims heal from the effects of child sexual abuse. And on the surface, that sounds great, right? But does it really do what it says it's going to do? In this video, we will take a look at Foundation's website. We'll also examine what a whistleblower has said about the Foundation, and I'll reflect on my own personal experience and how I believe Unique further victimizes presenters who are victims of sexual abuse. So if that sounds good to you and that sounds like you're ready for it, then follow me. Okay, so I wanted to look into this. So Elbo, the anti-blogger, she is a former, you know, unique rep, and she even has it up here, former unique punique rep. So she already um, kind of has looked into this and spilled the beans. And so the Unique Foundation Charity or Travesty, let's look at the facts. So this is some of the stuff that we are going to take a look at. Okay, in installment number 10, we were told this whistleblower that um, the Unique Foundation is a tax haven. So down here we have Unique Tale number 10, the Unique Foundation is a tax haven. For three weeks a month, the, they host adult female survivors of childhood sexual abuse, a week-long retreats where they eat fancy food, do yoga, meet other people who were abused as children, and that's it, a week. Each retreat only hosts something like 15 women. Only the smallest, tiniest amount from Unique products actually goes to the Unique Foundation. I've seen it from the inside. It's a front to make Unique sound indefinitely more philanthropic, if I can get words out, than it actually is. Furthermore, this same ex-employee states in installment 18, Unique often claims that its makeup line was started to make money for the Unique Foundation. That's a lie. The foundation came into being after Unique did. They also claim that normally the donated proceeds are only a marginal percentage. This comes from a new writer. Her name is Maz, and she's also a former Punique Hun. And she states, I am writing this article from the perspective of an ex-Unique presenter, just like Elle. One of the main things that pushed me to join Unique is my passion for supporting women who are victims of abuse. I had built a career on it already and I needed to supplement my income. The lady who would soon become my upline used that very fact to lure me in in her recruitment pitch. After feeding me all the usual bull of how much money presenters are making, how much I could make, car bonus this, commission that, she mentioned the charity called the Unique Foundation, which she said that 10% of all sales from Unique products go to the Unique Foundation. I was blown away. What a phenomenal contribution to such a worthy cause. I was excited and proud to join a company so dedicated to supporting victims of abuse. On the surface, it seemed like such a wonderful charity. For those of you who aren't aware of what Unique Foundation provides, it's run the four-day retreat known as the Haven Retreat. It takes groups of eight to 12 abuse survivors on a ranch in Utah, USA, where they do group activities, yoga, therapy sessions, etc. As a Hunbot, I am ashamed to say I spouted all the usual propaganda that was fed to me by my upline. I would share the pictures with captions about supporting sexually abused women and showcase how this amazing company donated 10% of its sales to women who had been sexually abused. Take this example below to give you an idea. As Unique started selling in new territories across Europe, South America, and Australia, I would post my eeks and yays about this globalization produces more revenue for the amazing charity. Did you know by purchasing your makeup from me, you are helping empower sexually abused women? I was not only doing this, I had been added to my uplines training group, her uplines training group, and the black status upline above her too. Hunbots were in full force gushing and cooing about the 10% donation, how wonderful it was, sharing their self-made photographs created on the latest free photo editing app. Emojis and stickers were spread as far as the eye could see. 
Indeed, presenters were even sharing stories of their own sexual abuse or that of family friends, e either through their videos or on Facebook walls or sales pitches in their selling groups. Oh yes, we were going to the top no matter what, and we were taking the unique foundation with us. Well, after all that, I am no longer sure that this charity is quite so amazeballs, hon. Let us dig a little deeper. The estimated net sales of Unique last year, this was in 2016, is $400 million. $400 million. There is no denying that is a lot of revenue. So going by the information, that drew me to sign up. That should be an astounding $40 million to Unique Foundation, right? I mean, that's a life-changing amount of money for thousands of women. Well, let me remind you of the figure I was quoted previously from the Unique Foundation website in the year 2016. Unique donated $3,534,560. That is less than 1% of the net sales. I have tried looking for any confirmation of how much Unique had pledged to donate and cannot find a solid answer. I certainly cannot find a promise of 10%. Okay, I'm skipping down here because both these ladies have concerns over the Unique Foundation. L, concerns of which many of my Facebook followers have voiced. In the screenshots provided, I noted that Huns are saying 100% of the proceeds go to the Unique Foundation. And once we sell out, we have funded 1,000 victims of childhood sexual abuse to attend the Haven Retreat. My first argument is, if the Unique Foundation is so wonderful and generous, why can't it just send those 1,000 poor victims to the retreat anyway? Why do Huns have to bust a gut selling an overpriced bundle? As Maz has researched, they're clearly making astronomical amounts in funding. Why does the future of 1,000 abused survivors depend on crap bundles of makeup being sold? Secondly, as you'll note from the screenshot, which is above, my followers are confused by these inconsistent Hun utterings. Like Blue says, if 100% is going to the charity, then the presenter, her various uplines and unique themselves won't actually be making any money on the sales. Pink also makes an interesting point, which Maz is going to follow up with. Unique Foundation only really benefits those with viable access to Utah, USA. Maz, exactly my point. Unique Foundation runs up to three retreats a month and is open to any survivor of C. S E. I'm not sure what that is. You have to fill out a form on their website and someone from the foundation will contact you um, to complete the application. The catch, you have to make your own way there. Okay, so we are now going to jump over to what it takes to actually apply. Okay, so here we are. This is a different article and also both links to the articles will be um, in the, my description. So step one, you enter your online application request and you will see a confirmation page indicating that you that we've received your re request. Okay, so this person submitted it and they waited for a reply. So um, let me see. A week went by and she didn't hear anything and decided to email them about their status. They didn't reply. Two days later, she gave them a call and a lady answered me, hello, I submitted a request for an application over a week ago and was wondering about the status of my request. I'm not sure how long it takes, but it's been over a week. The Unique Foundation lady. Oh, we usually email an application on the same day, but we've been pretty behind. What's your name? I can pull up your request right now. My name is Alibi. I can't say her last name. Okay, I sent your application over now. So now let's take a look at step two. Once we receive your request, we will send you a secure link to fill out the application form. The application form will come via email within three business days. Please look at it here. Okay, so here are some of the questions that are on the application. What medications are you on? Um, okay, and you're asked other kinds of stuff, and then you move on to step three. After receiving your application and you get it back to them via email, then you get an appointment with one of their clinicians who is interviewing you. So finally, I think she is interviewed by them. Um, let me get down to where that is. Oh, there's so much stuff here. Okay, hang on. All right, found it. 
Doris, hi, my name is Doris, and I'm going to be interviewing you today. Me, sure. Doris, okay. We're going to go over your application. Are you still on Adderall, Propanol, Cymbalta, Amplify, Lexapro, um, Lamectrogen, Clonopin, or Wellbutrin? I'm not on Propanol anymore. I was on it for my Essential Tremor, ET, but my doctor switched me to a new medication called Premadine. When Doris was reeling off the medication, she couldn't pronounce propanol. I was sitting there rolling my eyes thinking, this bitch, some clinician she is, if she can't even pronounce a medication that's prescribed a lot for social anxiety. Is this even a licensed clinician? I suspect it's probably a call center. Just saying, that's what I'm suspecting. I'm doubting it's an actual clinician. Doris, okay, I'll be, I'm going to ask you some more questions. I immediately noticed that Doris was asking me her questions in a very specific way. She was asking each question in a manner that almost seemed like she was trying to disqualify me from the retreat. My instinct clinked in. If I answered yes to just one question, I just knew she would be disqualifying me. So I thought, I'll play your game, biatch. That's when things started to get interesting. Doris. In your application, you mentioned that you get mood swings. When you have one of your mood swings, do you become manic? Me, no, I'm not manic, nor have I ever been manic. How do you act then? What do you do? When I have a mood swing, I'll ha be having a perfectly fine day and an okay day, and then all of a sudden, one of my moods, and my mood slips down, I become depressed. Doris, do you have night terrors or nightmares? Because for four days, nights, you'll be sharing a room with another person. I have nightmares. How do you react? Do you get violent? No, I don't get violent. I don't usually wake up. I just recall them in the morning. When my nightmares do wake me up, I don't usually react. I just go back to sleep. Do you ever discuss, dis do you ever dis disassociate? For example, others describe it as brain leaving their body and watching things from the outside of the body. Others lose blocks of times, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I disassociate. It feels like my brain leaves my body. I'm watching everything around me from the outside. I don't end up in target or lose time, and I've never become violent. How do you react then? Okay, I skipped down to a few more things because it just goes on through here. And again, I'm gonna put the link in the description and if you want to, you can look through this yourself. So then it goes on to how would that cause you to act, react? I become withdrawn, but eventually warm up. Do you have any current health problems? No, do you drink or take drugs? No. Doris then asked if I had any questions of my own and said the intake team would be in touch with me in a day or so. So, she also said they are booked through June 2018 and are not booking people until July 2018. So that would eventually take you to the final step of the application process. I was waiting for Doris's approval. Okay, so upon approval from the clinician, we will offer retreat dates to schedule. We are usually able to schedule you to attend the Haven Retreat within 180 days. You know where they can shove their approval? I felt like I was being judged hardcore. Doors did not come off as caring, thoughtful clinician like they're supposed to be. Every question she asked felt as if she was trying to disqualify me from the program. I just couldn't believe what I had experienced. So what can I surmise for this? Basically, in order to attend the Haven Retreat, you need to be completely recovered, have no issues whatsoever, and have never made a mistake in your past, such as trying to commit suicide. You also can't wake up in the middle of the night from a nightmare crying. Okay, this is already getting my blood boiling because to me, it really seems like if you are a victim of sexual abuse, um, like I said, you don't just, you know, get past that. Now, let me just back this up with, um, you know, my own personal story. I was sexually abused starting at the age of three by our next door neighbor. It was a married couple and it was the husband who sexually abused me. And this went on for several years. Now, I did not, later in life, I didn't remember what happened. I do now remember one day um, being in the bathroom telling, crying, and I don't remember exactly what happened, the order of anything, but I said something to my mom. I know I had been threatened not to say anything. But then it's like, whatever went on, it kind of like, I just packed it away. And I did disassociate. I used to like be able to wander all over the ceilings, um, and go from room to room on the ceiling. And I did that like all the time. So fast forward to, I'm in my twenties. And I don't remember why, but 
I was reading the paper and I saw my father's name in the paper. And my, my father had been um, dead for a number of years. And as something just clicked, and all of a sudden it came flooding black back to me, these memories of being sexually abused. And I was living with my boyfriend at the time. And I remember that I was like in a ball on the floor and like I didn't recognize him or anything. And finally I kind of came out of it. I think he called my mother. She didn't know what to do or say. And later when I asked her about it, her response to me was she thought I would just forget about it. She thought I'd forget about the sexual abuse. That stuff stays with you. It doesn't just leave. But my mom, she, she was born in 1921. So, you know, really back then, when I was younger, they, people didn't know how to deal with this stuff. We, you know, we didn't have things that we have now. So I never received any kind of counseling or, or any kind of anything as a child. Now, fast forward to I'm 18 years old and I had just graduated high school. I was living with a girlfriend, uh, my best friend from childhood. Like, I mean, a little right since I was a baby. Um, and I had gone, I went out with an ex-boyfriend and that night he raped me. And it was, uh, um, it was very traumatic. I'm not gonna go into all the details of that, but I am circling this back to one reason that I feel so, so strong against MLMs is I feel like overall they f further victimize you. Just like, you know, a, a, you know, when you blame the victim of a, a rape event. Myself, I never pressed charges or I didn't have those charges stick. My mom sent me off to Padre Island here in Texas, like to the beach and like, you know, for like a week. Like, that was the answer was for me to go and like frolic at the beach. Um, not to actually address the fact I had been raped. So then I go off to college and I proceed to do all kinds of drugs because I am just messed up from that in addition to having gone through that, you know, sexual abuse as a child. So I was having a very difficult time. So when I see stuff with this, this foundation, it really unnerves me because I can tell you honestly through and later on in life I was raped a second time also that all of this stuff it, it, it never leaves it's always there there's something and you know you never know when something could kind of um, get get you very emotional about what happened to you even years later okay so what prompted all of this is that in one of the groups somebody posted this and they posted about basically how they had a problem with this um, foundation. So here is a post on Instagram from a unique Han. Did you know that one in four girls will be sexually abused by the time they are 18? That means it's likely that you are or know someone who handles experiences trauma. Did you know that 90% of those girl, girls will actually know their abuser? One of my favorite things about Unique isn't even the makeup, it's the Unique Foundation that was started to help survivors of childhood sexual abuse begin their healing journey. A part of every purchase goes towards this foundation and when you have the opportunity to donate even more you can, um, when you check out. This company isn't just makeup and skincare, it's so much more than that. Okay, now we are going to move into my friend that I've known since I was 12 who was a unique presenter. She is also a survivor. And I really feel that unique plays on the fact that if you have been a victim, like look, you can help other victims with this you know, foundation we have and people can buy makeup from you that's gonna to go to this foundation. And that is something that will play very heavily on you if you have gone through this. And I just think it's really disgusting. I mean, honestly, I think it's just horrible. So here's the post. Okay, yesterday I was pleasantly surprised to this shout out, um, one of my Uplines teams group, because of all of you, I achieved this ranking in just six months. I can't thank you enough. Most of you know that I joined Unique back in 2014. I hit an elite level in just five months and was feeling good about myself and life. And then I let negative Nancy creep into my thoughts in 2016. A lot of changes happened that year. We moved after living in the same place for 27 years, empty nest syndrome, and well, I have age. 
Hitting the big 5-0 doesn't make you feel good. Sadly, as much as I loved Unique and all they had done for me and their generosity, I walked away. I thought to myself, I am too old to sell makeup and skincare. Then I started selling clothes. I had always missed Unique and the friends I had made. I continued to always use their products and cheer all my wise sisters on, though I had always regretted going down that rabbit hole in 2016. This past July, I was watching useless TV and saw a post this person made and click that join button again on Friday the 13th of all days too. Yes, I have to start over, but that is okay. I have learned that it's okay to be older. I had forgotten the reason why I hit that join button in the first place in 2014. It was because of the unique foundation and the that amazing little perfect pencil eyeliner that I just had to have. I can honestly say the unique family is the most generous and best coming. No looking back. Age is only a number, and I am so learned. I am not in competition with anyone, and to not be so hard on myself. I am truly blessed. God is good. And my friend was number six, top sales of all 2016. Now, I did do another video, which um, now I can't remember which one it, which one it was. I did a number, another video in which I went over the unique, um, their compensation plan and all of that but I wanted to bring this to your attention. Okay, so out of nearly 100,000 of unique presenters, less than 20 of them will earn $1,000 a month before expenses. Most, as we've discovered, are <laughs> from our sums above. We'll be lucky to earn $14 a month with unique. In fact, we've learned that with all MLMs, most probably will be lucky not to lose money. So here is another post from my friend. Here is the story of the Unique Foundation, how it got started. Our founder was diagnosed with leukemia and found himself connecting with a fellow patient on the same floor. This is why I fell in love with Unique when I discovered it in 2014. If you have questions about the Unique Foundation or Unique, please send me a message. And here is another post, same thing, touting the Unique Foundation. This is what Unique is about. Unique was created for the Unique Foundation. This is why I clicked that join button in 2014. Well, that eyeliner got me too. Please take a listen. Do you see how this foundation is playing to someone who has gone through sexual abuse trauma and it is getting them to perpetuate that same thing of like, look what good this is doing. And I find that troublesome. And now, look, there are over a million presenters worldwide. So how much of the money is going to this foundation? And as that whistleblower said, it's actually really designed to be a tax write-off. In fact, the owners of the company have a second foundation as well. And I just find the entire thing of using sexual abuse to... Um, get attention and and huns use it you see it in their posts of like look we help sexual abuse victims that that is an emotional thing to get people to buy product and their product is not all that good you can get better products elsewhere but it's that whole perpetuating that that endless cycle of people coming in from the bottom and what also bothers me is that my friend is saying, okay, look, you know, I'm number six in sales in the entire company, but I know from everything that I have gone through and read and researched, it's not like you're making that much money. Not when you think about what you have to pay to get the new products to try them because they're certainly not just like handed over to you. It doesn't count for these different trainings that you go on. There's so much, many expenses that you have, but that is the problem when you are hunting, you're not thinking of the expenses. You're thinking like, oh look, I'm getting this check. Oh look, I have this little purple card. Oh, it's paying for things, but it's false. It's giving you just this, the sense that you have a life that you don't because meanwhile you're just tethered to your phone to your laptop to social media everything to to maintain that status hit that next thing and to continue to schlep this makeup to other people ad infinity okay guys um that's going to do it for me now but um if, if you can't tell I'm not a fan of this foundation at all. I think it's a sham. And I mean, there are plenty of organizations that 
really will help people who have undergone sexual abuse. I just don't think the unique foundation is the one. I think the fact that you have to be like all put together to even be considered, that to me is a huge red flag. And I'm sure there's other people out there that have stories, you know, about it or about their application or what happened to them there. It really kind of makes me wonder, is this just another way to try to get more presenters? Because to me, it seems like it's a tool that definitely worked on my friend. That's like, oh, you help sexual abuse presenters. Oh, I, I, you know, I like this too, but oh, I want to join because you have that little thing. And there's been so many women who have undergone sexual abuse that that's definitely going to be something for women to be drawn to. Does that make sense? So if you enjoy anti-MLM content, I hope you'll consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate you being here, and remember, if you want there to be change, it's up to us to tell our stories. If you have an MLM story, I'm encouraging you to tell yours, and if you know someone who has one, encourage them to share as well, because there is power in numbers. There's is power in us telling our stories and getting it out there. I also invite you to file a report with the FTC. Most people don't take any action. MLMs are counting on the fact that you won't. You know, let's go into that good night. And remember, change starts now.